just wanted to make a quick addendum to a video I made a few weeks ago about cylinder swapping the Remington 1858 or the new model. It seems to have been quite contentious. The video has about 6,000 views now, almost, and the comment section is full, and I mean full, of people saying, no, they absolutely did do the cylinder swap. It was totally a way for reloading. They did it during the Civil War and the Old West. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely a thing they did, and you can't prove otherwise because uh, it was in this movie, Clint Eastwood did it, or I can do this in my bedroom, or Elmer Keith said like 30 years after this, or no, even later than that, like 50 years after the Civil War, that guys totally did this. <sighs> All right. I've already explained why that's kind of nonsense in my other video. And just to point out that with all those 6,000 views and all the people who left comments, not a single person has left a comment with a first-hand account of a cylinder swap reload being used in combat or in a gunfight or any kind of accessories that would be used for cylinder swapping, like say a cylinder pouch. Uh, no instructions from Remington about reloading via cylinder swapping. So I think I pretty well put that to bed and I will wait until someone can come up with a source for any of those things. Uh, what this video is gonna be for is just to address one small, well not so small detail that I missed in the original video, which was manufacturing and fitting of these things. So you can kind of see that the cylinder, or you should know that it's a very well fitted part. This is a very important part to the gun's function. If it's not fitted quite right, then you'll get tons of gas leak here. Uh, it won't be timed right. You'll have all sorts of issues. So the issue that we had back in the day is, well, let's back up a bit. Nowadays, people will buy these reproductions that are from Pieta or Birdie or whoever and buy cylinders and do cylinder swaps with them. That's cool, but that's not the state of things in 1860 or 1870. They weren't able to make things as repeatably as we can now with computer controlled machinery. So, if you wanted to have multiple cylinders for your revolver, be it a Colt or a Remington or whatever, you would need to get a cylinder first that's not cheap because this is a very complicated part, second probably only to the frame in terms of complexity and the number of operations it takes. And then you would have to get it fitted to your specific gun. People think that just because Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin and interchangeable parts and Colt did interchangeable parts, that that meant that manufacturing was as we think of it today. You know, you hit a button on the machine or you set up a fixture or whatnot and you make a thousand or a million identical parts. That's not the way it worked. In fact, the way that Eli Whitney was able to accomplish those interchangeable parts was pretty much just having a bunch of jigs for the parts and then hand fitting the parts into those jigs. It wasn't you put a part in a machine and then out you get a perfectly replicated part every single time. It wasn't like that. Things like the cylinders still had to be hand fitted into individual guns. That's why you sometimes do see uh, revolvers that are given in presentation cases with spare cylinders, that was not normal. Guns didn't normally come with spare cylinders. If they did, it was likewise for those presentation guns and they were spare parts. They were not for reloading. The, that idea just wasn't around back then and it wasn't cost effective. You had to buy the cylinder and get it fitted to your gun. That's a process in and of itself and why would you do that? Why would you go to the expense of first acquiring a spare cylinder and then either fitting it yourself or having a gunsmith fit it for you when you could just get another gun and another holster, stick it in your pants, and then be able to draw it way faster than you'd ever be able to cylinder swap this thing. People in the comments are like, oh, I can, I can cylinder swap in like six seconds or seven seconds. Yeah, that's cool, bro. I can draw this thing from a flap holster and shoot and hit a plate in two seconds. What is the advantage there? This is not a Glock. You cannot treat it as such. That is the end of my addendum. I hope you learned something. Please, for the love of God, I hope you learned something because I'm done talking about this. Thank you.